spin on her rain. Spin in the cake. Right in the cake. What is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create this burnout effect inside of After Effects. As you can see here I'll play this back really quick so you can see what the effect looks like and it's basically just a burnout effect as you would expect but obviously this wheel isn't actually spinning in the video and if you couldn't tell I faked this but yeah it's actually a pretty simple effect all you really need is a few different overlays and to animate this wheel here so yeah that's basically what i'm going to be going over in this video ideally you want to use footage of a car where the wheel is pretty straight and like centered and the camera should pretty much just be a straight on shot of the wheel because if it's anywhere like kind of rotated then your wheel isn't going to rotate along like the axis properly and it's just going to look off so so to do this effect properly you really just want to have footage that it's pretty straight on like this. I know I've already said that like 10 times already, but yeah, once you have that, we can go ahead and go into our ellipse tool. If you don't have this, then you can just go up to this rectangle tool, which it'll most likely be on. And if you hold left click, it will bring up this little like menu. So we can select that ellipse tool and then holding down shift will create like a perfect circle. As you can see, if you let go, then it's kind of just whatever it is. So yeah, holding down shift and then outlining that wheel it doesn't have to be perfect. But yeah, once you do that, just let go of the ellipse tool and it'll create that mask and you should see your mask in here. And what we want to do is bring this to none so we can actually see our footage as well as the mask. And we just want to fix this up so it's aligned with the wheel, like pretty much perfect like this. And then we can go into the mask, right click it and hit track mask and then just click analyze forward. And it actually did a perfect job, so I don't have to adjust anything, but if it did mess up, then you would have to sadly kind of manually do this, but hopefully it just automatically does it for you as well, so you don't have to go through that process. But once you have that, we can bring this mask back to add. So we just have this wheel here, and let's go ahead and duplicate this footage. So control D, and on the bottom layer, let's go ahead and delete that mask. Now what we wanna do is bring this anchor point right here to the middle of the wheel, and as you can see, the anchor point is kind of at the top of the wheel. So, so if I go ahead and try rotating this wheel right now, you can see it rotates around that anchor point. So obviously a wheel is not gonna rotate like this in real life. So to fix this, we wanna go ahead and hit A on our keyboard to bring up the anchor point. And like I said earlier, we wanna move this anchor point to the middle of the wheel. So using these position values right here, we can move the wheel up to that anchor point, just like this, and you wanna make it as center uh, as possible so kind of towards the center like that now you're probably confused because now the wheel is all the way up here but to fix that you just want to hit p while holding down shift so then you'll have your anchor point and position values at the same time so we can just go here and hit Control c on that first anchor point value and paste it onto the position and then same thing for this next one 815 Control c Control v so we basically just copy the anchor point values and then put them in our position and that just moves it so it's down where the original location was. So that's all good when I rotate it, you can see, boom, now we have the wheel that actually rotates. But as I go further along in the footage here, the camera moves and the anchor point does not stay with the wheel. As you can see, it is now down here. So when I go ahead and rotate it now, as you can see, it's not where we want it to be. So we're gonna have to go ahead and fix that as well. So going back into the anchor point and position values, Let's go ahead and set a keyframe at the start of our timeline where we set the anchor point. And then you want to go all the way to the end of the timeline and move that anchor point back to the middle of that wheel, just like that. And then once again, copy the anchor point to the position for both the X and Y values. So now you can see the anchor point is pretty much perfectly tracked to the middle there. If you needed to, you could create another anchor point towards like the middle of the footage, but in this case, it looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Now we can go ahead and hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotate, and for the rotation, let's set a keyframe at the start, and then go to the end, and we just wanna bring this up, and I'm pretty sure this is how a wheel spins, like this, I hope, <laughs> I hope it is, because if not, then I'll definitely get a lot of comments telling me that I'm doing this wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is how the wheel would be spinning in this case. But yeah, once you rotate your wheel like a lot like this, but yeah, I'm gonna actually bring this up even more so the wheel spins a lot faster. There we go. But I don't want the wheel to be spinning like that the whole time, so we're gonna actually select these keyframes and then hit F9 to easy ease them. If you don't have that shortcut, you can always go into the keyframe assistant and then hit easy ease just by right clicking that keyframe. But once you have that, you can go into the graph editor and then using this graph here, we're gonna create a graph where it slowly ramps up the wheel like it would in real life because obviously it's not just going to go to like instantly fast like that. So we're going to gradually ramp into it 
And to do this, you just want to kind of mess with this graph here until you get something that looks pretty realistic or whatever looks good in your footage. And I think that looks pretty solid. So if you want, you can go ahead and copy the graph that I have here. And then we can go ahead and enable motion blur and make sure that's enabled for your timeline as well. And that's just gonna smooth out everything and makes it look a lot more realistic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply some different smoke overlays and I'll have these linked down in the description below so you can go ahead and download them. But once you have them downloaded and imported into After Effects, we're just gonna drag one of them in here. I'm gonna be using the smoke burnout and you can see it looks something like this. So you just wanna move it around on your footage, scale it up if you need to, or scale it down. And you just wanna fit the tire here so it looks pretty close to what it would actually look like. So somewhere around here looks good. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for the position. So hitting P brings up the position. And then I'm gonna to go to the start of the timeline, but you can't really see it. So I'm just gonna kinda of guess that it would be like maybe right here and then go to the end and then move it down a little bit just so it's staying aligned with the wheel the whole entire time. And as you can see, the wheel actually spins up a bit faster than the smoke overlay. So what we actually need to do is just move this overlay over and that might mess up our position. So we might have to just kind of reset that, but it shouldn't be too hard just to reposition that. So there we go, that already looks a lot better. And another thing we can do to kind of blend in the smoke a little bit more is apply an effect called tint. So bringing this onto that smoke overlay and using the map white too uses eyedropper. And what you want to do is bring it onto, I guess the ground. Um, so it might be a road or whatever. You just want to bring it onto there and then bring the amount to tint percentage down to like 30% or 40, but it's going to depend on the different color that you choose. So just adjust this percentage to whatever kind of matches your footage the best. I just think that helps blend it in just a little bit better. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply this last overlay and we're going to do pretty much the same thing here, but I actually want this to go the other direction. So I'm going to right click this layer, go into transform and flip horizontal. We're just going to have to move this over here, scale it up. And I'm actually going to bring this behind the wheel. So just bringing it down below that wheel layer. And this overlay is pretty slow as well. So, so I'm gonna right click this and then go into time and then hit time stretch. I'm gonna bring this down to let's say 70%. So now that overlay is a lot faster. Then we can go ahead and do the same thing where we position this and keyframe it. So opening up the position once again and just matching it to that wheel. So it's pretty subtle, but I think it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. Now I'm going to go ahead and pre-compose all these layers because we're pretty much done with the uh, animations. So once we have that pre-composed, we can go ahead and apply some shake and I'm going to be using um, shake from Sapphire for this. You can use whatever shake like Red Giant or any other shake presets you have. And I'm pretty much going for like a handheld um, sort of effect. So I'm going to bring this amplitude down to 0.1 and set a keyframe a few frames before this wheel really starts to spin. So right here, and I'm going to hit U to bring up those keyframes so I can see them and then go a few frames over and then bring the amplitude back up to let's try just 1%. I think that looks pretty good. We might even drag this out a little bit more. Now, lastly, this is optional, but some people like to add like a bit of an impact or a shake. So if you want to, you can. This kind of just helps amplify the effect and brings a little bit more impact to it. So I prefer using my shake presets, which you can also find in the description below. And all you have to do is just create an adjustment layer and make sure motion blur is toggled on that adjustment layer. And then we can just bring on any shake we have here. So I'm going to drag on my shake Y and rotate. So as you can see, it just adds a little bit more of an impact and different style to the video. With it off, you can see it kind of almost looks boring, I guess. You can even drag this adjustment layer out towards maybe the middle of this effect and then maybe even do something where you scale in the video and then it just like zooms into that wheel and there we go that actually looks super sick as well all i did was just animate the scale and the position to scale in on that shake so yeah like i said that's an optional effect if you want to use that or not yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you guys did enjoy it then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys on the next one peace out